Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Although Sweden was not a direct participant in the Cold War, the country is still renowned for maintaining its fleet of fighter jets in that period. In 1979, the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab started developing a multi-role fighter jet that could obliterate both air and ground targets, as well as provide surveillance. The outcome of these efforts was the JAS-39 Gripen, a Delta Wing and Canard configuration aircraft, which looked like something out of a science fiction movie. Despite being designed in the 1970s, the Gripen did not have its maiden flight until 1988, particularly due to an extensive testing and improvement process. Saab has partnered with multiple other companies to produce various components of the JAS-39 Gripen, such as fuselage, wings, tail, landing gear, and weaponry. The process of assembling this aircraft is mind-blowing. Initially, various components are put together by hand at one or more facilities and shipped to a main plant for final assembly, where these components are joined together to create the final aircraft. Later, the technicians integrate major systems with the aircraft, such as flight controls, navigation, communication, and sensor suites. Gripen was specifically designed to conduct missions in harsh environments and from dispersed air bases. It can be airborne right after the scramble signal, requiring only engine start and final automatic startup tests. The key to operational efficiency is to get fighters airborne when needed, which is why Gripen was designed in a way that maximizes its availability. The aircraft requires a road strip as long as 16 by 800 meters to operate. Hence, it can be deployed from extremely short runways, taxiways, and even highways. Moreover, the aircraft has been designed to have a minimum turnaround time. For instance, one technician and five conscript mechanics can complete an air-to-air -air combat setup including refueling and rearming in less than 10 minutes. All the equipment required for aircraft maintenance and turnaround is packed in a single standard 20-foot container and deployed for operations at temporary bases. The Gripen is capable of performing a wide range of missions, including air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground attacks, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. The Gripen's unique delta wing design and canards drastically improve its overall stability, whereas its fly-by-wire control provides exceptional agility and maneuverability.
Although Sweden primarily operates this aircraft, it's common for airmen from different allied nations to encounter the Gripen in flight. JAS-39 Gripen is very similar to the Dassault Rafale. In fact, both planes were being developed simultaneously. However, Rafale was not introduced until 2001. The French multi-role fighter Rafale features the same delta wing and canard configuration as the JAS-39 Gripen, but it's powered by two engines instead of one. In addition to the similar delta wing design, Rafale has many of the same advancements as the Gripen. including fly-by-wire controls, a digital cockpit, as well as advanced sensors, avionics, and weapon systems. The Rafale is produced by Dassault Aviation and is headquartered in Paris, France. The company has various production facilities in Europe. The largest and most advanced facility is in St. Cloud, France, where engineers get valuable insights into their work using state-of-the-art 3D modeling technology. Each facility is used for separate tasks, from producing parts and components to assembling the entire aircraft. Once the components are fabricated and assembled, the fuselage, wings, avionics, flight controls, and other onboard systems are assembled to form the Rafale aircraft. Whenever a company completes developing an advanced aircraft like the Rafale, the next step is to train the pilots to operate it. For this reason, the engineers at Dassault developed a full mission simulator to provide a realistic and immersive environment for pilots to train in different scenarios. This simulator perfectly replicates Rafale's cockpit, including its displays and controls. In front of the pilot, an exceptional visual system provides realistic terrain, airfields, and cities, which increase situational awareness. To give the sensation of flight, the simulator includes a motion system, which enhances the overall training experience. The simulator is pre-programmed with a wide range of air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, and reconnaissance missions. Since it's made in flight, Rafale has been one of the favorites at air shows and other demonstrations, mainly because of its maneuverability and extraordinary aerial capabilities. Rafale is an engineering marvel, praised by pilots worldwide. It has a top speed of Mach 1.8 and uses stealth technology to remain undetected by enemy radars in hostile environments. Before Rafale, the leader of Dassault Aviation's fighter jet arsenal was the Mirage 2000, an aircraft that carried out various missions such as sky policing, air assault, and nuclear deterrence. The 
The Mirage 2000 is a single-engine jet capable of producing a thrust of 98 tons, whereas the Rafale is a twin-engine jet that can produce a thrust of 7.5 tons. The Rafale has a delta wing design similar to the Mirage. However, its canard provides additional stability. Therefore, the Rafale is more powerful, flies further and faster, carries more ammunition, and is capable of carrying out several missions. Additionally, the Rafale defends itself better and attacks better in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat. While Dassault Aviation is a prominent player in the assembly of advanced aircraft, several other notable companies are contributing to this endeavor. For instance, the iconic Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft represents a collaborative effort of several companies and showcases the prowess of multiple nations in the pursuit of excellence in aviation technology. The production of Eurofighter Typhoon involves a global collaboration involving 400 companies and generating roughly 100,000 jobs. The final assembly of Eurofighter Typhoon occurs at various locations to cater to specific air forces. For instance, Eurofighters for the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force, Royal Saudi Air Force, and the Royal Air Force of Oman are handled by the United Kingdom. On the other hand, Germany handles Eurofighters for the German Air Force and the Austrian Air Force, while Italy assembles typhoons for the Italian Air Force and Kuwait. Last but not least, Spain oversees the assembly of its own air force. This widespread network underscores Typhoon status as a global endeavor. This exceptional aircraft is powered by two Eurojet EJ-200 engines each boasting a thrust of 20,000 pounds with afterburners. The Eurofighter can travel at a maximum speed of Mach 2.35 at an altitude of 11,000 meters. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, NATO has been deploying these aircraft to the eastern part of the Alliance to safeguard the skies. On April 5, 2022, the Italian Air Force and the UK Royal Air Force Typhoons took to the skies alongside Romanian Air Force F-16s to perform a mock interception of a Romanian C-27 transport aircraft. Initially, the Romanian C-27 Spartan took off and started flying in the skies of Otopeni, Romania. Right after that, the UK Typhoons took off and intercepted the C-27, followed by Italian Typhoons joining the show. The assembly process of fighter jets like the Gripen, the Rafale and the Eurofighter Typhoon represents the commitment of European countries to developing advanced fighter jets and further enhancing their capabilities.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.